Thank you for tuning in to another edition of Check It Nation. I'm Mark. I'm Michelle. And I'm Kevin. And we are here, we are, in, we are interviewing the mayor of West Sacramento, Mr. Christopher Kabaden. Thank you for allowing us to interview you. Good, good to be here. And um, I've done a lot of research on you, and, um, and it's like I found out, you know, that you, you're actually very, uh, you're very accomplished. Um, I found out that you're, you're graduate of Sac State. You're, you're, you also got your bachelor from um, from University of Berkeley. Uh, Berkeley. Yeah, you. go Bears. <laughs> uh, also from Sac State, you were at your, um, is it policy administration? Yeah, yeah. I was in the master's program in public policy there and then I went back to teach. Right, that's why I, saw, I yeah. read that about that, yeah. So you're still you're still doing that right now? Not right now, with the campaign and running the city, it's a little much. But I love I love the university and love teaching too. Okay, you're a very well accomplished man, and very much so. Is a, you know another thing I, I found out is that you have been appointed to so many different committees. You know, it's like I mean, I I, I was actually blown I was actually blown away by how many how many committees that you you've been involved in, and um and I got a chance to watch the um, the local program, mm -hmm. you know, that MTV did on you mm -hmm. two years ago. How how was that like for you? You know, coming out. How was that whole process? You know, it's a lot like um, most people's coming out experience in a mm -hmm. lot of ways, just um, bigger. Okay. <laughs> and you know, it was I decided that it was time to do it. Okay. Um, uh, for a lot of reasons, personal and uh, wanting to change my community. Okay. Uh, and I thought I was giving it all up. You know, I thought this was it. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to come out. My city's going to say, "Nice knowing you." Because <laughs> you know? um, okay. I, it hadn't been the most, uh, let's say, gay positive place. Not just West Sacramento, but the whole region. If you once you got out of the bubble mm -hmm. of Midtown and, and downtown Sacramento, the whole region seemed kind of unfriendly. Right. right. Um, and certainly when I was start, first starting in politics. Mm -hmm. um, but so when I decided to come out, I thought that, you know I need to make a statement. I need to be visible. Uh, I need to be who I am, and it's probably going to cost me my political career. But mm -hmm. you know I've done a lot, and I'd be happy if I now go and retire and just spend my time boating on the river or, or, or reading books or something else. Mm -hmm. And um, the LOGA program uh, made it even more nerve-wracking because, uh, you know, cameras following you around and you can't change your mind. You know, mm -hmm. you know I'm doing this, there's these people following me, they're here to see this. Right. Um, it, maybe otherwise I would have thought, no, oh, forget it. You know, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm about to give my speech, maybe I'm just too nervous. But I did and it turned out to be the most amazing mm -hmm. thing. The response was incredible mm -hmm. in the community. Um, in the whole region, uh, in the whole world. I mean, I went to Europe this, this Christmas after that, and I was in Paris, and people would grab me on the street wow. and say, "Oh, I saw you on TV with a French accent." And uh, just the, you know, you just don't get the kind that opportunity in your life. All the other stuff that I've worked on, just has not changed so fundamentally so many people's lives. It was really amazing. Okay. At that time when you did come out, was you are you were you already out with your family? Uh, yeah, uh, for for about a few months. Oh, okay. Yeah, it hadn't been very long. I mean, I once I once I started, I, I wasn't out to anyone mm -hmm. six months before I came out to the whole public. Okay. Never. I wasn't on the down low. I wasn't doing any. I mean, it's just it was not part. I was like living the life of what a, what a priest is supposed to do. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. uh, so, I, and, and as soon as I decided I wanted to be a complete person personally, I I knew I I had that had to involve leading my political life with some integrity. Right. So I didn't have a double life ever. Okay. Um, and, but I, I, I didn't want my parents to know about it from the newspaper. Right, right. Um, so I, that's, that I'll tell them first and then I'll, I'll be ready to tell the world. How did they handle it? Um, it wasn't atypical. I took them to, uh, to dinner uh, one night, oh, well, it was Christmas Eve, mm -hmm. and uh, I told them, and they were making a bunch of, uh, and, well, my dad only was making some less than uh, gay positive comments, and I, you know, I said kind of angrily, well, you know I'm gay too, right? And, uh, it wasn't really the best way to say it. Um, and, he's like, and, he's, and he said, you know, you know, we don't agree with that, we don't like that, but you're still our son and pass the salt, and he never mentioned it again. So it wasn't, I think he was more concerned about the, the social acceptance. My dad's, uh, his family's from the Philippines, he was a farm worker growing up. So his whole struggle has been about how do I fit in? Right. And so when his son says, you know, I'm about to do the one thing that's going to make me totally stand out, mm -hmm. um, that really, I think that made him nervous more than any personal issues with it. Mm -hmm. So when I came out publicly, and he, and he came up when the Logo Show premiered, we did a premiere at Headhunters, um, and he saw the whole room and he saw the reaction and he watched on tape for the first time what had happened at City Hall that night of my speech. 
Um, so you know that was it for him. He was like, okay, now I'm ready, and and now he he's you know he, I don't know, he's not all about it, but uh, uh, you know he's comfortable talking about my you know my relationships and uh, the, my political activism and everything else in a way he never was before. So it's really brought us closer together. Wow, that's um, great, Mr. Mayor. What made you decide to run for the eighth assembly district? Well, you know, there's a lot of reasons. I mean, the, the what's what we're trying to do locally in my own city. It was clear um, we had to get deal with some of the state issues, whether it's flood protection or economic development on the waterfront, schools. So uh, you know, the big driver was you know the stuff I'm trying to do in my city and in the region take some advocacy and work at the legislature. But you know, be, it's also the case that there's it's partly breaking the glass ceiling or the lavender ceiling or whatever that, that we just we've never had an LGBT legislator that wasn't from kind of liberal coastal California. Um, and there hasn't been any LGBT, LGBT legislators of color. I mean, so it's the the policy, the perspective under the Capitol Dome has been you know much richer than it was 15 years ago when there were no LGBT legislators at all. But it's still been a very particular slice of our community. And uh, you know, just one more one more slice. But I think you know, adding a little more flavor to what what is seen under the Capitol Dome as being the the gay and lesbian experience in California is important. Um, so I thought this is this does matter, and the voice that you know our voices more voices need to be heard. And what do you think the most important issue is right now for the eighth district? Um, in in my district, the big issues are are schools and the delta and transportation. I mean, it's very bread and butter. You know, the salmon are disappearing. We're stuck in traffic, right. and they're laying off teachers. I mean, those are uh, that's what people care about day to day. Uh, and I, I was supposed to not be a good candidate. People said, "Oh, there's no way you're going to be able to win." As an openly gay candidate from from back of the, you know, shouldn't we start in Sacramento <laughs> first, and then you know, and then start to have, you know, asking Dixon and Woodland and Vacaville, and aunt, you know, it's it's not as though when I go there, people are like, hooray, the you know, the gay mayor is here. We've been waiting yeah. for you. But it's also that it's that what they care about is their own lives. Right. right? They, what they want to know is what am I going to do about their community? They don't. I mean, it's not. They don't. They're, they, what I'm doing in my life is not that big a deal to them. And so I, tr it's turning out to be a lot like when I came out in West Sac, which is people rise to the challenge. If you, right. if you, if you assume the best about people right. and you treat them like they're better than, the, you know, than we assume often, right. then they'll, most of the time they step up to it. Right. I have a question, um, Chashi. Mm -hmm. what, what do you think about the recent decision um, <laughs> pertaining to the gay marriage, you know, the Supreme Court? Uh, I mean, it's one of those. I mean, for somebody in my, in my generation, I know it's going to be. In, you know, when I'm when I'm 70, I will remember exactly where and where I was at the moment that, that the decision came out because it was, it was so incredible. Not just the outcome, right. but you know, reading the decision by this Republican justice, mm -hmm. what, who clearly was writing something for history. But you know, I was right. in a meeting on what to do about you know the dying salmon and lack of water quality in the delta and right. I just I could not pay attention to the rest of the meeting I, w I wasn't crying but I was so emotional about it because it was such a powerful moment and the decision was about much more much much more than marriage it right. was about just kind of our whole experience right. and who we are and our value and the injustice that's been done over time so it was uh, you know it was a huge 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 moment so now we just have to defend it and, and it, was, it was a big surprise for you then also um, yeah, it was a surprise. Um, both the outcome, but really just the way that they, the strength of the decision and the passion of it was yeah. was a surprise to me. Okay. Okay. Well, anyway, I would like to thank you for your time. Mark, thanks. You bet. And um, thank you for tuning in to another edition of Check Ignition.